Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the first in my video tutorial series of Reactor 5. And for those of you who are wondering exactly what Reactor 5 is, it is a, well, it's a bunch of different things. Um, it's for primarily uh, sound design and synthesis. It's a I guess you could classify it as a modular synth software program. Um, it can be used as, like I said, a synthesizer, a sequencer, a effects processor, and a sampler. And so it can do a bunch of uh, those audio related things. And uh, it also works as a plug-in um, in some major digital audio workstations. Uh, like Pro Tools and Cubase. Um, it supports RTAS, VST, and audio units for those of you who uh, want to know that kind of stuff for both the Mac and PC. So right now obviously I'm using it on a Mac and the version of Reactor that I'm currently using is 5.5 um, uh, it's a recent update uh, I, th I believe it was September 1st of this year, uh, 2010, and the it's a major upgrade from the old version of Reactor 5.1. Before it was scattered in a bunch of windows, and now it's just one clean little window like this here. Um, so let's uh, get into a little bit of what Reactor is uh, by opening up one of these ensembles. And ensembles in Reactor are basically an instrument, I guess you could say, uh, instrument plug-in in a program. So let's look at the new additions and take a synthesizer and we'll open up Steam Pipe 2. I like this one in particular. So just double click on it or drag it over. And you'll notice that there are a lot of different controls here. Um, you have knobs, you can adjust the knobs, and you can play some notes. So if you have a MIDI keyboard, um, Reactor 5 also supports key tracking on your QWERTY keyboard, so you can use that as a temporary MIDI controller or whatever. Play some notes here. So many other instruments like uh, let's take this ethnic for example so yeah you can do a lot of bunches uh, a bunch of different stuff a lot of good sounds in steam pipe um, this is a new addition. This is just one of the instruments. Actually, let's stick with Steam Pipe for a second. Um, so you notice you have a bunch of these presets for this instrument. Um, these are defined as snapshots in in Reactor, and you can you see you have all the snapshots which are, which are basically presets. But then there's also some empty spots, so you can make your own presets and store them here and then they'll be available in this menu. So that's how you can use Reactor as a pre-built instrument library and it can change some settings just like you can in Reason. Uh, but what makes Reactor particularly special is its modification abilities. And so you have the capability of either building your own synth from scratch or modifying existing in instruments in, uh, in Reactor. So just to give you a little example of how that works, um, double click anywhere besides a knob, don't click on a knob, just double click anywhere and then it brings up what's called the structure window. And in the structure window, you, base, you see the inner workings of whatever instrument you're currently on. In this case, steam pipe. See so you have steam and pipe. And you can double click on those these are what are what you call macros. 
and inside macros are more macros and until you get to modules which is the lowest level of I guess items you can construct a, a synth with and we'll get into much more of that later but see they're they're very complicated um, and it'll take a while to get to that point of being able to build that stuff but uh, that's the long and short of it you can modify anything you can delete stuff and it, your steam pipe won't have steam anymore so check that out all these knobs are gone but I undo it and they're all back so very very flexible and powerful program anyway um, if you want to make it easier on yourself you can split the panel or you can hit F3 on your keyboard and so you can see both the panel and the structure at the same time so so now I would like to show you uh, what uh, we will be constructing ourselves from the bottom up uh, we are going to sure we are going to find if you go to tutorial ensembles and synth one um, by the way if you're using the old reactor you the old-fashioned way to get to all these files is you go to file open ensemble and then you browse through them the hard way I guess you could say the regular way both ways work and so there's steam pipe as you can see but right now we want synth one so I'm gonna double click that and we're gonna get this very basic looking synthesizer and I play no and it has a little bit of a well first of all it has an envelope an amplitude envelope a frequency filter and a low frequency oscillator and I'll, I will explain what all of that is um, in due time probably in the next tutorial and if you take a look at the LFO this is probably the most fun one to explain uh, notice there's a slight variation in the pitch but as I increase the depth the amplitude of the, the note goes up of the LFO goes up So there's a, a wider degree of, of frequency change, of pitch change, in that note. And then the rate naturally increases the frequency or the speed at which that um, oscill low frequency oscillation occurs. Uh, notice how it creates a new note when you do that. have that and then you have the attack then you have an envelope um, and this this I guess you could say the volume of the note um, the volume properties so right now the attack is very short you hear the note right when I press the key but if I increase the attack or I delay it notice the diagram too moving down here but now when I play the note it'll be it'll rush in it won't play right away and if I increase the release then this determines the activity after I let go of the key so it rushes in but I let go and it'll play for a while so anyway um, I will explain how to do how to create all of this yourself and how it all works in the next tutorial. So um, I hope you enjoyed this introduction and uh, see you next time.